Hello everyone, uh, this next game I'm about to show you is probably one of Garry Kasparov's most famous games. Uh, it was played in 1999 in Vikings in Netherlands, and although probably every channel on YouTube already covered this game, there is uh, quite a story to this game and uh, I will try to present it as such. <clears throat> so Garry Kasparov is white and he's playing against Vessel in Topolov. So uh, Kasparov plays e4. And already we have quite a surprise in the first move. Topolov plays uh, d6, the Perse defense. And uh, this was uh, quite, a, quite a surprise to Kasparov because, uh, well, uh, this isn't something Topolov usually plays, uh, but he played it uh, to avoid any opening preparations by Kasparov. So this is uh, neither player really used this uh, in tournament play. And it's not really an opening one would use in such a high, high tournament. So Kasparov plays d4. We have a knight f6 by Topalov, knight to c3, g6, bishop to e3, we have uh, bishop to g7, queen to d2, we have c6, f3, b5, knight g to e2, knight b to d7, and now Kasparov plays bishop to h6. Uh, and uh, here Topalov captures, bishop captures on h6, and queen captures on h6. And uh, this is uh, okay for Kasparov as uh, it will stop Topal from ever castling que uh, kingside. Uh, but Topal doesn't mind, uh, he was uh, considering a, a queenside castle anyway. So we have bishop to b7, we have a3 by Kasparov, Kasparov, Kasparov decides not to castle just yet, uh, well, uh, he considers a3 is a better move here. So we have e5 by Topalov, uh, and now Kasparov castles. We have queen to e7, and king b1, just getting his king uh, to a safer square. So we have a6 by Topalov, this a6 move kind of prevents the white from playing d5 and weakening this b5 pawn. So Topalov plays a6, preparing to castle himself, and uh, Kasparov plays uh, knight, c5, knight c1. Uh, because, uh, well, uh, Kasparov really wants to get uh, this knight to a5, as this a6 move kind of really, really makes a nice square for the knight on a5. So Topalov uh, uh, castles queenside, we have knight to b3. Uh, and now Topalov plays e captures on d4. We have rook captures on d4 and now c5. And Kasparov plays rook to d1. So we have knight to b6, preparing that d5. If uh, black ever plays d5, uh, Topalov will be very happy about this. And uh, it took Kasparov some, I, I think, 12 minutes to figure out his next move. And he decided to play g3. And uh, what this g3 move does, uh, Kasparov wants to get this knight to a5. He wants to put this bishop on h3 on this strong diagonal and he wants to play queen to f4. And with this idea all of white's pieces will be pointing uh, to the direction of the black king. So Topalov plays uh, king to b8 and here we have knight to a5. We have bishop to a8 uh, so uh, the bishop can't be captured by the knight. <clears throat> and now uh, Kasparov plays bishop to h3, continuing with his plan. And uh, here uh, Topalov does push d5. So we have a queen to, a queen to f4 check by Kasparov, and uh, here uh, Topalov plays king to a7. And uh, now Kasparov plays rook h to e1. And now all of Kasparov's pieces are in ideal places, and uh, here Kasparov was uh, already actually calculating a very nice idea and uh, Topalov allows it he plays d4 and he played d4 feeling quite satisfied so this is Kasparov's idea uh, Kasparov plays uh, knight to d5 attacking the queen and uh, going for that exchange of knights to remove one more defender from the king so we have knight captures on d5 e captures on d5 and this opens up an attack on the queen and now here Topalov plays queen to d6, uh, offering to exchange queens. And uh, this is actually the position Kasparov was hoping for. Uh, he said that, uh, well, uh, this could easily be a, a draw, uh, but uh, he says that uh, in his mind he was uh, thinking of the game between uh, Edward Lasker and uh, Sir Thomas, uh, you know, the one with the nice king walk. I have it covered on my channel if you haven't seen it. So here Kasparov actually plays rook captures on d4. <clears throat> and as soon as Kasparov played this rook captures on d4, he got out of uh, he got off the table and started walking around and he was calculating all sorts of lines in his head and uh, he says that it suddenly shocked him. What if what if Topalov plays king to b6? 
Uh, King to b6 would probably ruin every idea Kasparov had. Uh, but this is why Kasparov says that uh, Kaisa was kind to him that day. He was playing playing a game against the vessel in Topalov. Who isn't interested in playing a move like King to b6, also an, a great attacker himself? And, uh, well, playing King b6 would, uh, well, be something like admitting that he missed rook captures on d4. So here Topalov captures, here Topalov captures the rook on d4. And uh, this is the point uh, of this uh, entire combination. Kasparov plays rook to e7. And uh, one more thing I want you to know that uh, this entire idea of rook, rook captures on d4 is possible uh, only because this uh, rook is on h8. If this rook was on any other square but h8, then this would not be possible. But you'll see what I mean by this later. So Kasparov plays a rook to e7 check, and uh, well, although this wasn't a surprise to Topalov, it's it's a very nice idea. Let's see what happens if Topalov captures the second rook. If a queen captures on e7, you would get a queen captures on d4 with check, a king to b8, a queen to b6 with check. Uh, you have to block this, bishop to b7, and now knight to c6 check. And uh, this is forking the king and queen. But that doesn't really matter. As you can see, this bishop here is protecting c8. So the king has to go to a8, and this would be queen to a7 checkmate. <clears throat> so after this rook uh, to e7 check, uh, Topalov instantly played uh, king to b6. And uh, here Kasparov plays queen captures on d4 with check. And this is what he meant when he was thinking about the game between Edward Lasker and Sir Thomas. Uh, he is taking the king for a nice walk. So Topalov plays uh, king captures on a5. Here we have b4 by Kasparov, uh, and we have king to a4 by Topalov. And Kasparov plays queen c3, and this is a, a this is a deadly move as uh, it's a threatening uh, queen to b3 checkmate. So this has to be defended somehow, and uh, Topalov plays queen captures on d5, protecting the b3 square with his queen. Uh, and here uh, Kasparov plays rook to a7, also a very nice move, now threatening rook captures on a6 with checkmate. And uh, it's really not a simple task to stop this. Uh, I mean, you could try a lot of things. Uh, the queen can't move from here to protect it with the queen because then queen b3 checkmate is available again. If you try something like rook to d6 to prevent checkmate this way, well, this leads actually to a, a very beautiful idea uh, that is king to b2. And now uh, queen to b3 check is unstoppable, followed by c captures on b3 with checkmate. So only move would be something like queen to d4, and here Kasparov would simply capture the queen, and uh, Topalov cannot capture back because rook captures on a6 is checkmate again. So after this rook a7 idea, Topalov finds a bishop to b7, protecting the pawn this way. So Kasparov captures it, rook, rook captures on b7, and uh, Topalov plays queen to c4. Uh, so this allows Kasparov to capture this knight on f6, and here Kasparov is also threatening queen captures on a6 with checkmate. So Topalov has to capture this pawn on a3, uh, going even deeper with the king. So we have queen captures on a6 with check, and we have king captures on b4. And uh, this is the position Topalov says that he saw uh, when Kasparov sacrificed the rook. But uh, Topalov uh, missed this c3 move. If Topalov had seen this c3, c3 move, he probably would have played king b6 and went for a draw. Uh, but he missed this. Uh, so what happens if the queen captures? If the queen captures on c3, well, it's simply queen captures on b5 with check. King a3 and rook to a7, this is deadly because queen to a5 and rook captures on f a5 is checkmate. So on c3, uh, Topalov has to capture with the king, king captures on c3. And now we have this very nice queen to a1 check by Kasparov. And now the king cannot go to d3 because of bishop to f1 check picking up the queen. So Topalov plays uh, king to d2. And now we have queen to b2 check and uh, Topalov plays king to d1, and it seems that uh, the attack is over for Kasparov, but uh, now you see uh, this bishop on h3, as it usually is, is, well, he didn't really do that much uh, in the game, but uh, his presence was well known in every line Kasparov used in the attack. Uh, and now, as usual with great attackers, this light square bishop comes into the attack just in the right moment, so bishop to f1, and this is deadly. 
the queen is attacked and the queen has nowhere to go. If the queen ever moves from this diagonal, then queen to e2 checkmate is coming. So let's see what happens if queen captures the bishop. If queen captures an f1, we have queen to c2 check, king to e1, and rook to e7 check. And the king has no squares to go. The queen has to block, and this is checkmate. So on bishop f1, Topalov tries one more counter blow, and it, it seems as he found a way out of this. He plays a rook to d2, now attacking uh, Kasparov's queen. Uh, but Kasparov uh, again continues the attack in great style and plays rook to d7, uh, sacrificing this rook finally and uh, pinning this rook so the queen can be captured. So uh, Topalov captures the rook, and here... Topalov parts with his queen, and we have a bishop to c4. And uh, this is uh, what you remember when I told you that the, the entire idea of rook captures on d4, the rook sacrifice was possible because this rook was on h8. And now you will see why. Uh, Kasparov captures the queen with bishop captures on c4, and he's threatening a queen to e2 checkmate. And if black would try to stop this, for example, with playing rook to e8 to defend the e2 square, then Kasparov would have this very nice uh, queen to c1 checkmate. So the only move for Topalov here is to capture the bishop. So b captures on c4. And now Kasparov finally picks up this rook on h8. So queen captures on h8. So a very nice point to this line. Uh, we have rook to d3. Uh, Topalov will continue this game and try to fight it out. Uh, but Kasparov finishes it very nicely. We have queen to a8, c3. Now queen to a4 check, we have king to e1, and now f4, not allowing Topalov any counterplay. We have uh, f5, and now Kasparov plays king to c1, denying uh, any hope this c-pawn might have of becoming a queen. Uh, we have rook to d2, going for that h2 pawn, and here Kasparov plays queen to, queen to a7, and in this position Topalov resigned. Uh, the, the white queen will gobble up all of these pawns and the rook cannot capture this pawn on h2 because of queen to g1 check picking up the rook. So in this position, uh, Gary Top uh, I mean uh, Vessel and Topalov resigned. And yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting game uh, as Topalov played that uh, Pierce defense uh, just to surprise Kasparov. So both players were on unknown uh, terms. And uh, like Kasparov says, it's uh, good that Kaisa was kind to him that day because uh, Topalov could have easily gone for a draw if he refused the rook sacrifice, but uh, luckily he was playing none other than Vessel and Topalov that day, and so this beautiful game was accomplished, uh, although Topalov did help to create it. So yeah, uh, this is the game, and uh, the reason I decided to show one more game by Kasparov is that uh, August is almost uh, here, and, uh, well, one more chance to see the B Beast of Baku uh, return to chess and play some great games in St. Louis. So yeah, that's it. As usual, you can check uh, two of my previous videos here, and uh, I would also like to thank people who continue to contribute to my channel. Uh, thank you, Phil Colville, and thank you, thank you William uh, Schaeffermeyer. Uh, you guys are great, and uh, really, thanks for all your support. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Hope. Oh.